Welcome to Make It Happen with me, your host, Maggie. Next week, we are diving into part two with AJ Richards, but today is the first Monday of a new month, and I am super excited to have you back here for our Monday Huddle Q&A. This is our second Monday Huddle of 2024, a new monthly segment where I am here to answer your burning nutrition, fitness, and health questions on the first Monday of each month. And I pulled from the questions you guys asked last month to fuel today's fire, and we have some wonderful questions that I'm gonna answer for you. I actually received each of these questions multiple times, so I know they're great because it means many of you are wondering the same things. If you have a question you'd like me to talk about in the March episode of the Monday Huddle Q&A, make sure that you're following me on Instagram. My handle is at fitness underscore Maggie. This is where I will put a call for you to ask me your questions, and I will select from those questions to answer next month. So if you want the direct link, go ahead and look in the show notes, but it's at fitness underscore Maggie. Our first question today, drum roll please, is what is the best strategy for increasing weights in your workouts? I think it's first important to address when and then how. As a rule of thumb, if the last three or so reps of any given exercise don't feel super challenging, then it's time to bump up the weight. Or as a side note, you could also choose to increase the reps or vary the speed at which you're pumping out those reps. You don't always have to reach for more weight just to get an increased challenge. But today's question is about increasing the actual weight in your strength workouts. So that is what we're focusing on. There are so many strategies that you could use to effectively increase the weight you're lifting, which in turn is increasing your strength, of course. But you asked for the best, and I love the strategy that I'm giving you today. So back to how you know that you need to increase the weight that you're reaching for first, and I'll lead by giving an example. Let's say you can currently do 10 reps of bicep curl using 10 pound weights with proper form, not swinging, or using momentum. Before you increase the weight you're using, you need to first make sure that you're able to execute any given exercise with proper form at the current weight first. If you haven't mastered your form, you risk injury, especially if you're increasing weights before your body can handle them. And if you can't get through with proper form, then it's just not ready yet. But getting through with proper form should still be challenging for your body. So a good rule of thumb is that the final three reps of any exercise need to be just that, super challenging for you to maintain proper form. But you do maintain proper form. If you really need to lean into momentum, then your first goal is to get those 10 reps in using solely the muscles in your biceps, not swinging or momentum. Okay, so here comes the strategy that I want to share with you to actually increase the amount of weight that you're using. It's a bit twofold, so feel free to make it yours, merging them in whatever way feels good for you. But this is a super effective strategy to go about increasing the weight that you're using in any given exercise. Okay, so you're gonna first master those 10 reps with good form, and numbers eight, nine, and 10 are gonna be super challenging. Next, you're gonna make it a goal to get to 12 reps, and once the last three reps of those 12 reps aren't close to impossible for you to execute, you're going to bump up to 15 reps. Now, once you hit 15, generally that's when you need to reach for heavier weight, maybe 12 pound or 15 pound dumbbells, for example. I say generally, by the way, because you might like the idea of increasing to 20 reps. I incorporate this kind of strength training regularly. It's just another strategy to keep both your strength and your endurance high. Okay, are you ready for the second part of this two-part equation? A cool strategy to lean into for increasing the weight is doing a drop set. This is when you start with that bumped up heavier weight, let's say 15 pound dumbbells, up from the 10 pounders, and you do as many reps as you can with this weight, with proper form, of course. You might only be able to do six reps before your muscles want to rely on momentum or swinging. So after that sixth rep, you are going to quickly, and this is the key, quickly drop that weight and pick up a lighter weight, maybe back to that 10 pound dumbbell, and finish however many reps that you can. To burnout, don't stop at 10 or even 15. If you can keep going, you do. The idea here is to increase training volume so you're lifting more 
exhausting your muscles, but continuing to challenge them even after they're exhausted by lifting a bit lighter weights and increasing your strength as a result. This method can be used in any strength training workout, and I highly recommend using it for any of my workouts that use weights. And this includes series 6.0 through 10.0 on Amazon video, and then series 12.0 and 14.0 at fitnessmaggie.com at the time of recording this episode, of course. If you're wondering how to apply this for a timed strength exercise versus a number of reps, which would be the case when you work out with me, instead of focusing on the last three reps being super challenging, make it a goal for the last 10 or so seconds of your exercise to be super challenging. This assures that you are consistently challenging yourself. That is how we continue to improve. And you know this because you asked the question. The next question today is for the best plant-based protein sources for vegetarians, or really anyone who wants to increase their protein from plants. And you can get all the protein that your body needs by leaning into plant-based sources only. It requires more focus and effort, but you totally can. It takes more effort, as you know, because plant-based sources of protein aren't as plentiful as our animal-based sources. And it takes focus because you need to make sure that you're consuming a variety of sources so that you consume the essential amino acids that your body needs. Animal proteins are considered complete, and that's because they contain all of the nine essential amino acids that your body needs. These are deemed, quote, essential because they cannot be made in the body and we have to actually consume these amino acids from food. Some plant-based proteins are complete, but the majority are not. So if you're taking in plant proteins that are, quote, incomplete, then it's the most ideal to pair a few together that provide a complete essential amino acid profile. Ever had beans and rice or hummus and pita? How about peanut butter on whole wheat toast? These are some classic plant-based protein combos that came about for good reason. Basically, they're pairing two incomplete sources together to make a complete protein. I'm leaving a link to a comprehensive list of my favorite protein sources in the show notes. It's a quick PDF and it separates the animal-based proteins from your plant-based proteins. A few of my favorite complete plant-based protein sources that you're gonna find on this list include quinoa, nutritional yeast, edamame, and chia seeds. Okay, so today's final question is, what are my suggestions for when you've plateaued? So often a plateau occurs when we have lost weight by reducing the amount of calories that we're taking in and or increasing the activity that we're expending. And to a degree where our body basically says, okay, I'm done, and you need to actually physically do something to signal your body that it's okay to continue losing weight. And often a really good strategy for this is to increase the amount of calories that you're taking in particularly focusing on lean protein. If you haven't yet listened to episode number 19 about my thoughts on the common advice of eating less and moving more, this is your first stop because I addressed this very question about how I would suggest busting through a plateau. Take a few minutes and listen if this is something that you're struggling with. So there you have it, the second Monday huddle in the books. If you have a question for me that you'd like answered in the future, make sure that you come follow me on Instagram and respond to my call for questions when I ask for them. Thank you so much for being here today. Before you go, would you mind leaving a five-star review for me if you feel this podcast is worthy, of course, and make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, go make it happen. 